Hey everybody, welcome back. It's your boy Wes Gardner and we are in the nitty gritty. This episode, episode number four of the top 25 games of all time, we're in the top 10. We're finally in the best of the best, the cream of the crop. Oh man, there's some good ones. And just a quick note before we get started, my top 10 was super difficult to put together. I knew the games that would be on it, I just didn't know the order. So some of these, you're gonna see some absolute classics and be like, that's not number two, that's not number one. But man, we got some wild surprises in store. I'm so excited, but without further ado, it's episode number four. Let's dig right in to the top 25 games of all time. So you know earlier in the video where I said that Heroes of Might and Magic 3 might be the most addictive game I've ever played? Well, my number 10 pick, Diablo 2, is the most addictive game I've ever played. Uh, that was the only game ever that I actually ranked on the world ladder and was t in the top 100 in the world at something. Um, it was, I think, the second season that Battle.net ever came out way back when. Um, yeah, I was on the US West server as Kami to Hobo. Or no, it wasn't as Kami to Hobo. Kami to Hobo was the second time I made the ladder. The first time was as Icewind underscore Wes on the US West server. That's right. Oh man, I'm taking me back. Um, but the gameplay loop is perfect. It's click, click, click. Uh, you know, whenever you hear the click, click, click action RPG meme, Diablo 2 is where that came from. Um, procedurally generated levels. Um, you have certain quests that you go through. The story gets bigger and bigger and bigger. In, in my opinion, though, the story is the lesser reason to play the game. Just with how good combat feels and leveling up and being able to take on bigger and bigger monsters, getting better and better equipment, that game's perfect. In that in that type of loop, Diablo 2 is perfect. I think Diablo 3 is a great, fantastic game, which you should definitely check out, but Diablo 2 is better. There is no game that has gotten that addictive nature of, I need one more item, oh, I need to equip one more thing, I need to just alter this a little bit more need to go out and kill something stronger to get better loot, to get more gold, to buy another thing. That can go on for thousands, literally thousands of hours. And I highly suggest that you play it. Go on Battle.net, get yourself a copy of it. Comes with Diablo 2 and Lords of Destruction. Oh, just play it. Oh, I want to dig back in so bad, but I got to finish this video. So good, but my number 10 game of all time, Diablo 2. So I'm a big Star Wars fan in regards to Star Wars video games. And a lot of people may think that the game on this list is going to be Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, but it's not. My favorite Star Wars game ever, beyond a shadow of a doubt, spoiler alert, once again it's on the Power Hour, is Star Wars Jedi Outcast. The Kyle Katarn story of becoming a Jedi in Jedi Outcast. Genius. Whenever I think of a Star Wars story, whether it's the films, I know I have the freaking Empire Strikes Back poster behind me. Um, I still think my favorite Star Wars anything is Jedi Outcast. It uses the Quake 3 engine, so I was already dabbling into level development there. But seeing this, uh, I was like, wow, you can make a Star Wars game in the Quake engine? It blew my mind. Um, but jump puzzles, using your lightsaber in many different ways. But here's the fun part about it. You had to earn your lightsaber, much like Knights of the Old Republic did later. You had to earn it. You had to go through a trial and tribulation. You had to go to the Jedi temples. You had to prove to Luke Skywalker that you were worthy of being a Jedi. And won't want to ruin the story or anything, but there's a reason why it's called Jedi Outcast. And God, that game is so, so fantastic. I urge you to play it. Go get it. Yeah, once again, good old game, Steam, wherever you got to play it, please play it. So much fun. So we're getting there, guys. Uh, my number eight game ever. Here's a little bit of a plot twist. You know, I talked about Final Fantasy Tactics and Final Fantasy XII. Well, the one, the original Mamma Jamma that got me into the series um, I, I think those two games are better in regards to the actual game part, but Final Fantasy VII, I mean, got my copy right here, black label and all, uh, has the little typo on the back, it's first print, first print edition, so happy that I have this. The first game where a, a video game story made me cry, and it wasn't the part that everyone talks about, but it was, uh, further on in the game, 
Another thing Final Fantasy VII did is I love the Materia system. I think it's one of the most genuinely simple yet incredibly customizable systems in any game. I just love it. It's easy to use, it's easy to understand, but you can do a whole lot with it. Kind of make your party your own. The characters, I could, I feel like I could still just write a little biography page on all of them. That's how well I remember all of them. The story got me hooked. Uh, all of the stuff happening behind the scenes, all of the subplots of, uh, you know, like Yuffie and Vincent. And you had Hojo and what's the deal with this, uh, you know, with the Mako stuff and what's all this and how does Sephiroth fit in there. Fantastic. Just so much to that game. I remember the first time I got to the first disc and realized, oh, I'm just not going to go, you know, town to town within this little Juno reactor facility. There's a world out there. You can get an airship. You can get a chocobo. You can go anywhere in the world. And really did. It was mind blowing. And Final Fantasy VII, out of all the games on this list, is the game that I've played to completion the most. So a very special place in my heart. I, I put it above the other Final Fantasy games, not because I think it's a better Final Fantasy game, just because as a Japanese role-playing game, which is a franchise and a genre that I love to death, it's, it's the one I go back to as the reason why I enjoy those other ones so much. So it got higher up on the list. I know it might seem a little weird, but I, do, I knew that it was in the top 10. I just didn't know where. But I think number eight's a solid, solid place for it. But hey, if you haven't played it, what's the deal? Come on. It's like, this is Video Games 101, man. Go play Final Fantasy VII. So the number seven game on our list is one that well, I think will also cause a little bit of controversy. So we had Final Fantasy Tactics on the list. And it is one of my favorite tactics role-playing game, kind of, you know, Japanese strategy role-playing games ever made. But it's not quite as good as the original Mamma Jamma. That's right, man. I'm talking about Tactics Ogre. Let us cling together. Here is my complete inbox Super Famicom copy that we play on the Retron 5 there. It also did get a re-release on PSP. And I love that edition. I even have the strategy guide back there too. Just tons and tons of content. In fact, let me grab it. So yeah, I picked this up the day the game came out. I picked up my reserve copy at a GameStop. Um, and this is for the PSP kind of remake. It does correlate a little bit with the Super Nintendo original, but they added some character classes and some job classes. Basically, if you like Final Fantasy Tactics because of its depth and its story and its intrigue, Tactics Ogre is all of that but better and more of it. Uh, that's why I said it's going to be a little controversial. Those are fighting words for some people, but I think Tactics Ogre is the single best strategy role-playing game ever made. That counts Civ, that counts all of the, like Alpha Centauri, all that stuff. Tactics Ogre, let us cling together. It's genius. It is a bona fide masterpiece. And we're getting to masterpiece caliber stuff right here, but in regards to how much they could fit on a little cartridge and on a little PSP disc, I'm, I'm still like reeling with how much content there is in that game. Unbelievable. Do yourself a favor. Play it however you can. It is genius. Bonafide genius. So coming in at number six is a game that I've purchased way too many times on way too many different platforms. And there's a pretty good reason why. And that game is Baldur's Gate 2, Shadows of Amn. It is everything I love about fantasy. I'm, I'm a big fan of like R.A. Salvatore. I'm a big fan of Tolkien. I'm a big fan of um, fantasy literature, uh, but also like fantasy video games. I just really like, you know, the big sprawling epic ex exploration and characters that you come to love and enjoy. And, you know, they have different intrigues and personal growth. And how does that relate to the story? All of these themes that make fantasy literature just something I really dig into, all of that is present in Baldur's Gate 2. Not only that, but you are the crux of the story. So the gameplay I think still holds up today. Um, yeah, that that whole, the engine, uh, the uh, Infinity Engine, I believe it's called, just the game plays super well. And there's so much depth and there's so much nuance in the character development and the way that it feels like your personal story, but it grows bigger and bigger and bigger. 
And only good fantasy I've seen, sci-fi and fantasy, can really do that to where you start off small and it just expands into something that's truly unforgettable. And Baldur's Gate 2, you know, we got newer games that mimic it, but in my opinion, you can't beat that. It took the original Baldur's Gate, improved upon it, gave you dual class loadouts, gave you more customization for your party and your hero, and you're talking a 50-hour magnum opus of great writing, great characters. It all comes together into kind of a perfect package. And if I were to recommend one computer role-playing game that anyone play, it'd be Baldur's Gate 2. <laughs> oh man, what do you guys think? Hey, that other Final Fantasy game surprised you, didn't it? You weren't expecting it. I'm telling you, it's, it's getting crazy. It's getting down to the nitty gritty. And you know, we went from number 10 to number six. So you know what that means. The next episode is the last episode the top five games of all time. It's going to get people talking. I'm sure of it. Anyways, until then, catch you later. Peace.